iPadOS 17 launches today, so I thought it would be fun to dive into the updates, changes, and new features that I feel really stand out. With iPadOS 17, I like to think of it in these categories, lock screen personalization, a new app that was already on iPhone but now on iPad, stage manager, and then more granular feature updates or changes that are specific to certain apps but still are really nice quality of life improvements if you're an iPad user. Lock screen personalization. Before we even hop inside iPad, we're met with the lock screen. iPadOS 17 introduces a more personal and useful lock screen. There's a fresh set of stunning new wallpapers. With your live photos set as your wallpaper, you even get this really nice motion effect that feels extremely fun and dynamic when you wake your iPad. And as you unlock the iPad, the live photo motion settles into your home screen, which is just a rather lovely effect. Like iPhone, you can now also choose from various fonts and colors to customize the look of the date and time. But perhaps the most exciting new change to the iPad lock screen with iPadOS 17 is the ability to add widgets to the lock screen. You can now place widgets in the new space off to the side and glance at information like the weather or your battery levels and upcoming events without having to unlock your iPad. There is support for rotation, so if you use your iPad in portrait mode, you can configure a set of widgets to appear under the time. But landscape obviously has more flexibility since it can showcase more information and larger information along the left side. What I really like is there is adaptive tinting for the widgets, so the widgets blend seamlessly with your wallpaper. The widgets are also interactive, so if you ever wanted to mark something off as completed in reminders or something like that, you can now. This is such a small, small change in the grand scheme of things, but it's big in terms of being able to control information that the widgets display without ever needing to launch them playing and pausing music or audiobooks, turning on and off lights or other smart home devices. I just, I think it's great. I am especially looking forward to when I make my to-do list so I can just check those off as I go right from my lock or home screen. There's also support for live activities so you can stay on top of things as they are happening in real time right from the lock screen like tracking your Uber Eats order or flight information. Another little fun plus is setting multiple timers now, so you know, that's cool if you do that. A new app, Health. We have a new app coming to iPad, and no, I'm not talking about the journal app, though I am very much looking forward to that. I'm talking about Health. We had it on iPhone, and now it's on iPad, but optimized, of course, for that larger display. I personally am not a fan of digging into the Health app on my iPhone, due to honestly how much information there is in health. This seemed like an app that was always just made for larger displays, so I'm happy to see that we finally get that with iPadOS 17. It's much easier to dig into your health trends on iPad, the charts are interactive, and you can customize how you want to view this information. A new feature that comes to health is mood tracking. There's an overall greater focus on mental health in the health app now, which I appreciate and I do really enjoy being able to document my mood and how I'm feeling, especially like how you can add your moods at different points during the day or add a mood for the overall day and that moods are on a spectrum. I think this was really nicely thought out since our emotions are more on a spectrum and they can change moment to moment in a given day. It does give you space to attach different adjectives to your moods and document a bit more on why you might be feeling that way which as my first impression, I think is pretty nice. Stage Manager. We saw Stage Manager on iPad introduced back in 2022 to allow for even more multitasking options, but it was limiting in that the windows were forced into certain sizes and layouts predetermined by the software. But with iPadOS 17, Stage Manager is a lot more flexible gives you greater control over the positioning of your windows and where you like them to appear on the screen. So it's even easier to achieve your ideal workspace on iPad. It does also add external camera support, which is pretty nifty, especially if you're using an external display alongside your iPad. 
So if you're using, say, an Apple Studio display and your iPad together, you can use the Studio Display's built-in camera or just any external USB camera to take conference calls from your iPad. App-specific feature updates. Kicking off with reminders. Now there's a whole host of exciting new updates or changes within specific apps on iPad. And some are not even limited to just the iPad, but also take their own shape across iOS 17, depending on the device. One update I particularly really like is Reminders now offers a column view. So you can create something similar to a Kanban board. I found this view very helpful for me as I create trimester specific reminders than just having one full list. This is also helpful if you have different tasks that you'd like to filter by progress. So as a YouTuber, this could look something like having videos in the scripting phase and then moving those over into a filming or editing phases. There's just a lot of ways that this can be approached. You can also create templates for your reminders. So if you wanna use the same setup for different reminders lists, you can do that. Grocery lists automatically sort into categories to make shopping easier. And there's more options for how you can have your items grouped together. The Notes app also has such really nice quality of life improvements as well. I feel like everyone has something in their Notes app right now. A weird poem when you were in a mood, a random Wi-Fi password that's several years out of date, baby names, a group of hashtags, or maybe you actually use Notes for note-taking. It has great free options. Well, now there is improved support for inline PDFs and scanned documents, making it even better for note-taking if you add presentation slides or PDF textbooks to the app. You can read, annotate, or sketch directly on them in the new fold width presentation of that PDF. It also does use machine learning for enhanced autofill fields. So it's a lot easier to scan and fill out those documents or contracts that you might have. And this isn't limited to notes, but this can also be used within the files app as well. I know there's quite a few people actually who will download a dedicated scanner app and maybe they have different capabilities that you enjoy using, but I've always just used notes and it was a really easy experience. All I needed and now it's even better because I can fill it out and sign them directly from my iPad in a more streamlined way. There's also linked notes, so you're able to connect thoughts between notes. The two right brackets is a shortcut for creating a link while you're writing a note. And you can even create a new note from the one you're in and have those automatically link. Freeform is one of my favorite apps that Apple has introduced. It's like a productivity mind mapping app, and you can really turn it into however you work and imagine. I like using it for some quick and dirty sketches of my digital product designs, but I also like using it for creating mood boards and collecting links for home reno and DIY projects. Now inside Freeform with iPadOS 17, there is follow along, which allows you to follow along with collaborators and see their point of view when working inside Freeform and vice versa. There's also new drawing tools, fountain pen, highlighter, watercolor, and a few more. We also finally get shape recognition, which you might remember from the Notes app. There's also support for Apple Pencil Hover and Tilt, improved drawing with a diagramming mode, and also PDF markup support. Among app-specific feature ads, there's a few more software updates that I think many people will enjoy. For instance, you no longer have to say, hey Siri, to get her attention, to ask a question, or to do something. You can just say Siri now. And keyboard is just that much better. There's improved accuracy with autocorrect. It's also easier to revert back to text that may have been autocorrected. And there's also inline predictive text, which I find particularly helpful, especially when writing and responding to emails. Now, I feel like I've already shared so much about iPadOS 17, but there's still a lot of updates, feature additions, and other small quirky things I wasn't able to fit in this video. So definitely a lot to check out and explore when iPadOS 17 launches today. If there's something I wasn't able to cover about iPadOS 17 that you'd like me to, feel free to leave that down in the comments below and I'll definitely dig into that more for future videos. I really like this update for iPads and feel like a lot of the little stuff 
will add up over time in my workflows on iPad. But until then, I will see you in my next video. Bye.